This is still our curve sketching example in section 4.4. And in this video, we're going to look at the second derivative of our function and see how this affects our graph, um, especially looking at how this affects concavity. And um, so remember that our function, the original function, was f of x equals x to the 5 thirds power minus 5x to the 2 thirds power. And so our first derivative had been 5 thirds x to the 2 thirds minus 10 thirds x to the negative 1 third. Okay, so we had done that in the previous video. And so now we've got to take the second derivative second derivative of our function, and that'll be f prime of x, or f double prime of x, excuse me, f double prime of x equals a little bit of power rule on this. That would be 10 ninths x to the negative one third, and then plus, multiplying those, plus 10 ninths x to the negative 4 thirds. OK, and just like we did with the first derivative, um, we have taken the second derivative at this point, but we're going to want to simplify and rewrite this a little bit so that it's easier to work with. So what we're going to do is factor some stuff out. 10 ninths can factor out for sure. And then take our lowest power of x, which would be x to the negative 4 thirds in this case. OK. And so when we do that, uh, in our first term, what's left over would be not 10 ninths, but x to the negative one third divided by x to the negative four thirds. So you subtract those exponents, negative one third minus negative four thirds, you end up getting three thirds or just x to the first power. Again, hey, that's really nice. And then in our second term, well, we factored all of that out, and so the only thing left over there is a plus one. Okay, so now let's make this into a rational function. We'd have 10x plus one up in the numerator, and then 9x to the four thirds down in the denominator. Okay, so that is the second derivative of our function written in a nice workable format. So we're going to look for places where this second derivative is undefined and where it equals zero. And remember the places where it equals zero, those are potential inflection points. Uh, so that's the PIPs that I'm labeling here potential inflection points are where f double prime of x equals zero. And so that we would just have to focus on the numerator. And so that would give us a value of x equals negative one. Okay, so potentially that could be an inflection point. We're going to have to check our concavity and see if it actually switches on either side of x equals negative one, but potentially could work. Okay, and then also for our second derivative testing, we want to see where our second derivative is undefined. So that would be seeing where the denominator equals zero, and that would be at x equals zero. Okay, so we can test our second derivative now make yourself a number line, label it f double prime of x, maybe put the function there as well. And especially I'm going to make that into the cube root of x to the fourth power, just so it's a little nicer with the sign analysis there. 
And let's put our notable points on here. Negative one and zero. Okay, this one had f double prime equals zero. This one has f double prime undefined. Okay, now time for sign analysis. Pick a negative number that's less than negative one and check the signs of your factors here. So the 10 is just 10, that's gonna be positive. And then you take your negative number there, like negative two or negative three, something like that, anything that's less than negative one. And if you add one to it, you're still gonna have a negative result, no matter what your number is. Then in the denominator, nine is positive. And this is kind of a nice one. Uh, the cube root of a number to the fourth power. Well, any number to the fourth power is going to be positive. And the cube root of a positive number is positive. So that factor is actually going to be positive the whole way across this number line. So we got overall here a negative divided by positive. And so that would give us a negative second derivative. Okay. Now in between negative one and zero, this is where doing sign analysis rather than finding an actual value can be a little bit of a time saver because you're going to have to think about some fraction in here, like negative one half, for instance. But in our factors, 10 is still positive. If you take a number like negative one half and add one, or any fraction there that's between zero and negative one, you add one to it, it's gonna end up being a small positive number. So that comes positive now. And then both factors in our denominator are positive. So positive second derivative there. And then for our last interval, think of any positive number you want. Okay, and check your factors. 10 is positive, positive number plus one is positive, nine is positive, and cube root of x to the fourth is always positive. So positive there. Okay, so now we wanna identify our intervals where the function is concave up and where it is concave down. So concave up for starters. Okay, up, happy, positive, positive second derivative happens here and here. So you could express that as negative one to zero union with zero to infinity, or you could just say negative one to infinity. That's okay, that's still indicating it's concave up there, okay. And then concave down would be our other portion here. Down, negative, right there. Okay. Um, so that would be from negative infinity to negative one. Like that. Okay. And so then it's also worth noting that we do switch concavity around what we had labeled as a potential inflection point right here at x equals negative one. It does actually switch concavity from concave down to concave up. And so that is actually an inflection point. So yay, that's cool. All right, let's make note of that because that's a nice solid point that we can put on our graph. Okay, where x equals negative one, and then let's find f of negative one as well. Okay, negative one to the five thirds, minus five, negative one to the two thirds. And if it helps you, you can put those back in radical form. So that'd be negative one to the fifth, and take the cube root, minus five, negative one squared, and take the cube root, okay? So this would be negative one minus 
five times, that would be positive one there. So negative one minus five would give us negative six. So there's gonna be a point on the graph at negative one comma negative six. Those are the coordinates. And it happens to be an inflection point. So we should have that notable change from concave down to concave up on the different sides of this point. All right. And so in the next video, last video for this section, we're going to put all of this together and see what the graph of this function looks like. And then there will be another example that you guys can try. All right. So I'll see you in the next video.